Don't panic and don't touch. This week, we're gonna be getting up close and personal about my experience with mature skin breakouts this past week. Welcome to Beyond 50 Skin. My name is Cindy. Today, we're gonna to be talking about mature skin breakouts. Almost everyone gets the occasional breakout, either from hormones, stress, so many different reasons, but mature skin is a little bit different because our skin, as we are aging, it gets thinner and is more prone to skin tears and skin breakdown. So I'm gonna go through my experience this last week with an acne breakout and also show you some of the products that I'm using and how you can treat mature skin. It's gonna be a little bit different than when you are younger or if you have kids that are using products, don't grab their products, they're probably gonna to be too harsh for you. So I'm gonna go through my whole routine, morning, evening, and products that I'm using. At the very end, I'm gonna talk about whether we should be using our devices, maybe some products we should be skipping for the time being. So let's get started and talk about mature skin breakouts. As I said in the intro, don't panic and don't touch. The reason you don't want to squeeze, pop, or touch your pimples is because it'll drive the bacteria further into the skin, causing increased breakouts, or it'll spread the bacteria, and it'll just cause inflammation and delayed healing time, which is what we absolutely don't want. But there are things we can do for our mature breakouts, and I'm gonna go through how I switch up my entire routine when I have a breakout. I change my cleansers, I change my exfoliators, I change my moisturizers, and I also change my S SPFs a bit, and also the devices that I'm using. So let's get started with what I do with my cleansing. Typically, as you know, if you've been following me, I in the morning, I just use a mist to cleanse my skin or to refresh my skin in the morning. But when I have a breakout, I switch to either a morning water splash or a cleanser with an active in it. And I typically reach for the CeraVe Renewing SA Cleanser. SA stands for salicylic acid. When you have a breakout or you're using an exfoliating cleanser, I think percentages matter. Typically in skincare, I don't usually worry about like the percentages. I kind of care more about the formulation as a whole, but when I have a breakout, I really try to limit the number of exfoliants that I'm using. And so I actually do look more carefully at the percentages. In this case, the CeraVe has a 0.5 salicylic acid, and salicylic acid gets down into the pore, cleans out the bacteria, cleans out the oil, and also CeraVe makes an acne foaming cleanser that has 2% salicylic acid. And for my mature, dry, sensitive skin, that's just way too high a percentage of exfoliation in my cleanser. The next step that I do is I switch up my toner. Instead of using a hydrating moisturizing toner, I use a toner with some exfoliating acids in it. And again, I do pay attention to the percentage of exfoliating ingredients in my toner. What I really like is the Gentle Toner by Mysama. The reason I like this is because it has lactic acid. Lactic acid is slightly moisturizing, which is really great for mature skin, and it's on the lower percentage size. It's not too high. It doesn't strip my skin. It also has salicylic acid. I don't use this every day. I'm using this about three times a week. If I used it every day, it would be too stripping and too drying, and I would end up having dry skin, and dry skin and breakouts don't go together. You're going to end up having delayed healing time, more irritation, and possibly the more spread, more spread of the breakouts and bacteria. The third exfoliating ingredient in here is polyhydroxy acid or glyconolactone. And that is a very gentle acid that's really great for mature skin and very sensitive skin. So if you have really sensitive skin, look for polyhydroxy acid. I also wanna mention when you're using your toners, I like a really thin little pad because it doesn't waste the product, kind of an aside. But what I do is I take my Clean Skin Club cloths and I just cut them into little squares. I used to use these bamboo sustainable cloths and I would just throw them in the laundry, but I found that they are the terry cloth just soaks up so much of the product, I just end up wasting it. So I've gone to the, ski, the Clean Skin Club cloths and just kind of cutting them up into little squares to save some product. Okay, the next step in my routine after cleansing, after doing a gentle exfoliation, is to use a moisturizer. And what I do is I switch up my moisturizer. I usually use a fairly heavy moisturizer because I have super dry skin with lots of emollients and humectants and some occlusives in it. But when I have a breakout, that's just too heavy. It feels just too suffocating on my skin. So I switched to a lighter moisturizer. The one I like is the Ghost Democracy. Also go to a fragrance-free moisturizer. If you happen to have fragrance in your moisturizer, skip to one that's fragrance-free. It'll be less irritating. I love the Ghost Democracy. It's a light gel formula. I also am really liking the new Skin Fix Gel Barrier Repair. 
Super amazing, lightweight formula. Gels are so much nicer when you have breakouts and your skin's a little bit irritated. They're so cooling to the skin. And this one's alcohol free. Definitely make sure there's no alcohol in your gel formulation because some do contain alcohol. It's just such a nice lightweight formula. Next thing I do when I have a breakout is to switch to a mineral sunscreen. The reason you have to use sunscreen when you're breaking out, number one, you might be exfoliating a little bit more than usual and you want to do all your sun safety behaviors using your dedicated SPF, using hats, not going into the sun, seeking shade, because the sun is just gonna cause your breakouts to peel, to peel, to heal with possible hyperpigmentation. And you wanna avoid that at all costs. So the, I switched to a mineral sunscreen that's less irritating. Chemical sunscreens on my sort of already irritated skin can be just like, the icing on the cake for irritation. So I switched to a mineral sunscreen. I really have been liking the Bliss, the Invisible, the Blockstar Invisible Daily Sunscreen. This is not only a 30 SPF. If you want something a little more protective as far as a higher SPF, I also love the Clinique Pep Start. Not a cheap sunscreen, but it's a really lightweight formula, mineral sunscreen, and I absolutely love it. And it kind of has a peachy texture, a peachy texture, a peachy color, and it's super lightweight, doesn't leave a white cast, and it just blends right in to the skin. The Bliss is a little bit darker. If you want to kind of cover up your breakouts a little bit with a little bit of a tint, this is a little bit darker. Also super lightweight formula. I like it a lot. And like I said, it doesn't feel heavy on the skin, sinks right in, kind of more of a dry touch formula. The Pep Start leaves a little bit more of a dewy finish than the Bliss. Now I wanna talk about devices and maybe what you'd be doing in your evening routine. My evening routine, I switch that up too. Typically I use a tretinoin in my evening routine, but when I have a breakout, I have to cut back the number of evenings that I use tretinoin. And you would say, well, why is that? Because tretinoin is supposed to help prevent acne breakouts or pimple breakouts. But the point is that my skin is already quite sensitive and irritated and tretinoin obviously causes more irritation faster accelerating cell turnover. And I find that I have to cut back the number of evenings that I use my tretinoin. Some people might find, might find that that's not the case and you don't have to. What you really need to do is listen to your skin. If your skin is irritated, then you need to cut back on something. And for me, it's the evening routine with tretinoin. So I cut back to maybe every other night. And then as things start to heal up, I go back to my five nights a week for my tret. But that's another step that you can take to decrease irritation if you use tretinoin or you may decrease you might change to a retinol that's less irritating a retinaldehyde or a retinol like the Olay um regenerate generous i think it is that's just an over-the-counter nice retinol that you can use it's just something that's going to be less irritating and more soothing to your skin if you're used to tretinoin you might also consider using a retinol or retinaldehyde it's only one conversion away from tretinoin and it'll be less irritating it's also antibacterial i've been trying the new may love moonlight retinol in my pm routine it also has niacinamide bisabolol which is soothing ceramides hyaluronic acid and squalane retinaldehyde is definitely yellow but this formula is really yellow i used about half a dropper and was a little curious about the transfer and as you can see it does transfer color so if you have light colored sheets beware i didn't find this to be an issue with my favorite retinaldehyde which is the allies of skin formula it's more moisturizing and contains peptides but may love is much more economical at around 37 dollars i'm also really curious about Trini London's two new retinaldehyde formulas. So if you've tried those, let me know what you think. Also something new that I've tried during this breakout are pimple patches. I used them years ago and I wasn't really sure if they worked or didn't work. I had trouble keeping them on, but I tried them this time and I used them at nighttime and I actually found some benefit from them. I'll show before and afters and I think that the inflammation is definitely improved. The one thing that you, I did find sort of problematic is if I use them during the day, they tend to fall off and they especially don't stick over sunscreen and most skincare. They basically cover up your pimple. They can either come with an active ingredient or just the plain colloidal patch. Be careful if you choose the one with the active ingredient because then you're sort of either double or triple exfoliating and you men might end up with more irritation than you would if you hadn't used the patch in the first place. So be careful about which one you pick. If you're using other active ingredients, you don't wanna maybe triple exfoliate by getting the patch that has more active ingredient in it. I actually did feel like they helped me this time. And like I said, the only problem is getting them to stick over skincare. 
So let me know if you've used a pimple patch before. Like I said, I'm going to try the peace out patches now that I'm out of the mighty patches, but that was just another non-invasive technique that's really helpful in getting your spots to heal up. And like I said, I feel like I found more benefit by using them overnight. The last topic that I want to talk about is what do I do with my at-home devices? Do I keep using them? Do I put them aside? What do I do? So I'll tell you, I keep using my LED mask because LED is great for inflammation. I find this really reduces the redness of my skin. And so I keep using that several times a week in kind of my regular routine. The other thing that I skip is my cosmetic microneedling. I don't do any microneedling, cosmetic or otherwise, or any other invasive treatments to my skin. I skip microneedling altogether. I typically use cosmetic microneedling about three or four times a week, but I don't do that at all when I have a break breakout because it'll just spread the bacteria, cause increased healing time, and just kind of make a mess. So I skip the whole microneedling. The other thing that I continue doing is my microcurrent. I really enjoy microcurrent. It's just very relaxing to me. I'm kind of on a toss-up if it's really doing much for my skin, but I'm kind of on a long-term sort of experiment with that. But I still do my micro, my microcurrent. I don't find it irritating. You might, so you might want to cut that out of your routine if it's irritating. Definitely listen to your skin. If your skin's not happy, then just cut it out. That's the bottom line. Another device that I haven't tried yet, but that I'm really curious about is high frequency. Supposedly that they use an argon gas plus an electrode which creates oxygen and bacteria can't live in the presence of oxygen. And they have these at-home wands that can help the healing process of pimples when you use high frequency. I'm kind of curious about that. If you've tried that, leave me a comment down below. Totally curious. You can also go for an in-office treatment for high frequency to help heal your acne. The other thing I should mention as far as in-office treatments, if you have acne that you're just not sure why you have it, it won't stop, you can't clear it, definitely go see your dermatologist. They are the medical professionals on clearing acne issues. So don't hesitate to go see a dermatologist if your simple, simply changing your skincare routine isn't helping. Like I said, they're the professionals. So that's kind of how I change up my skincare routine when I have a mature acne breakout. Let me know what you do during your routine. If you have a breakout, what products you love and leave me a comment down below. Like, subscribe and share this video with a friend if you think they might benefit from it. Even mature skin gets the occasional breakout. Step one, don't touch. Step two, don't panic. Step three, reach for a salicylic acid wash. One of my favorites is the CeraVe SA Cleanser. It's surprisingly gentle and great on acne. You might also consider a gentle acid toner with combined AHAs, PHAs, and salicylic acid. And always remember your SPF so your breakouts don't heal with hyperpigmentation. And if all else fails, grab a patch and cover it up. Acne breakouts at any age are never fun. I hope you found these tips helpful and wishing you a skintastic day. Thanks again for joining me today and have a skintastic breakout-free day. Take good care. Bye, everybody.